uh, we'll be following the usual format of broadcast section first, then dailies, and we'll end with the Sundays. Um, if we could uh, ask everyone to raise their hand if they'd like to ask a question, and we'll look to get around as many people as possible. Uh, we'll start with Vicky Gomesall at Sky Sports News. Hi there, Thomas. How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. Good, good. Uh, can we just start with Romelu Lukaku, if we can? Um, how's he looking? Is he fit for Sunday? Is he going to play? Is he going to be in your starting eleven? Yeah, well, we have one more training, one more training to go. But the week was a heavy load for him because we, he was in the group with the late starters uh, um, from our guys. So it was a, it was a kind of an overload week so far. Today was uh, low intensity, and tomorrow we will have an important training before the match. But like I said, if we are, we are hoping that he's on the pitch for, for Sunday, and uh, things look like it. Is he the last piece of your jigsaw, do you feel, Thomas? Or are you looking to bring in some more signings? Because obviously you've, you've let go a lot of players, so you've got yeah. a bit more funds. Do you think you're going to use that? Yeah, we let go players because I, I, I truly also believe that everybody needs a role and needs a place to fight for. So it was also necessary, although I don't like it at all because the guys who left us played a, a big role in the last campaign and it was a very successful campaign and you build relationship with your players and, and it's not nice to let them go but at the same time it's, it's sometimes also necessary because uh, um, like I said everybody needs a role and everybody needs a role uh, situation to w which is worth fighting for so um, these are the decision we made um, is uh, Romelu the, 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 the missing piece? Well, we hope, we hope, but uh, at the same time, we, we, we try to find uh, solutions for, 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 for any questions who are asked during games, and we want to, we want to still be a, a, a strong squad and a, a squad that comes from a team effort. And uh, Romelu is uh, that kind of. Um, of um, personality and profile that we were missing up front and uh, from now it's uh, it's our job to to push ourselves to the limit what about at the back then because it's an exciting new prospect i see sherva chalaba is he going to stay in your plans you know because i know he's been out on loan what's yeah. the future hold for him at the moment well i think he did a fantastic pre-season with us and he's a he's a very good player and and even more important a, a top character he has both feet uh, um, on the ground and he took his chance um, you know, very impressively. Um, he played very, very good matches in pre-season. He, he performed 120 minutes against uh, Villarreal and another strong 90 minutes now against Crystal Palace. So I think it's uh, very logic that he stays with us and, and is looking for his chance here. Like you said, we let go some some players, and uh, Trevor is the guy that we absolutely want to keep. And um, this is the this is the status for him. So you're gonna he's gonna sign a new contract then, yes? This actually I don't know. Actually, I absolutely don't know nothing about the contract situation. I just know that we had a talk yesterday, and I think that his situation is uh, that he went out for loans. He had uh, the minutes he needed to develop. And now is a good moment to stay with us and to be part of, uh, of the group and, and do further steps to fulfill his dream, which is to be a part of a Chelsea, of a strong Chelsea squad, which he is in the moment. And uh, we trust him and he deserves this. This is not a gift. It's, uh, it's, um, it's what he deserves uh, for now. And this is a, a good situation for us and for him right now. And I'm absolutely not aware what it means for his contract. Okay, just finally from me then, the North London Derby, mm -hmm. how excited are you with all the fans to be back in it as well? Yeah, we had a, we had a pre-season match, match with uh, not all the fans in it, but we could see like the, the atmosphere and the energy that this uh, derby and this stadium can produce. <clears throat> I think it's, uh, it's, always a, it's always a tough one, it's always a tight one, it's, it's like what it is in derbies and in North London derby, so North London game. Um, it's... Um, they had a bit of rough start now and and i think from their perspective uh, it can be like a help that that a big rival from 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 within the city arrives now and um, it can be like like uh, like can create a situation where they like 
um, stick together and 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 try to make uh, try to win their, their their crowd over with a with a strong performance. So we should be absolutely pr prepared for the best arsenal possible. They have uh, qualities. They have a strong coach. They have a strong team, strong lineup, strong signings. So I think we should prepare for the for the best arsenal possible. And at the same time. Uh, do what we what we need to do. Push the standards to the to the limit on this on this very Sunday. Let's see where our limit is and and look for an intense game. Look for look for intensity. Look for rhythm, and look for 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 a confident game on and off the ball. This is what we're looking for. And um, yeah, uh, no, anything else but a tough game would be a big surprise. Hi Thomas, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. Um, now you're, you're a man who knows his stuff. Uh, you'll know about the curse of the number nine shirt at Chelsea. But generally, strikers who wear the number nine shirt don't do very well. But I know that Roman Lukaku is going to break that curse. How many goals are you expecting from him this season? 50, 60. Honestly, until winter. Normally until winter. <laughs> no. We expect to have an impact. Let's see where the impact is. Of course, we expect goals. We, we should not talk around it. And, and he himself expects goals. And, and why? Because he delivered goals everywhere he played. So, yeah, this is why he's here. And, uh, and then we will see how far the impact goes. He is a big personality in the dressing room. But I'm, like I said before, I'm absolutely convinced that he will have a very positive impact uh, on on Timo Werner, on um, on Kai Havertz, on Christian Pulisic, the guys who play with him, around him, and will maybe open spaces and and attract um, attract the focus from from the defenders. So let's see how how we will measure it in the end. But that we demand and he demands goals from him. Yeah, that is that is obvious. But. Uh, I'm just now one week with him, and uh, I get to know him better and better. And then we will maybe we will make set set a set a clear target um, uh, later in the season. Can you liken him to another striker you work with? Who would you who would you compare him to someone you've already worked with? Oh, it's a tough one. I think he's pretty unique from his uh, physicality and and from his ability to play with the back towards the goal. But for me, he's the strongest when he is in a half open, open position, even for transition game to use his immense speed. So I think with this kind of uh, physical power and and at the same time, like being so fast and um, being so hungry and like a true goal scorer, in his in his characteristic, um, I think it's uh, also for me a unique and new experience. He's a very nice guy uh, that I can tell you. It's just very nice uh, to see for us, and everybody told me about, and everybody was right. We are we are a good group, and it's very important to us to be a good group and to be a respectful group and a very democratic group where everybody is is involved and feels and shares the responsibility. And this is a very, very good fit to us. So let's hope it, it stays that positive. Hi, Thomas. Hi. Um, can we just have an update on some team news on Hakim Ziyech on why Christian Pulisic um, didn't, you know, train open training? Well, if it's Christian, it's uh, unfortunately pretty easy to explain. He had a positive test uh, and needs to follow the. Um, the, the protocol, so he was not in training and is not available for the game. Hakim and uh, N'Golo were both uh, in training today and um, did everything until yesterday to be in training today. Had absolutely no problems, so we need to have another more um, physical, more intense training session tomorrow with them and with the team and decide after tomorrow's training session at 11. But right now, it, it seems uh, very positive that both can be in the squad for, for Sunday. Um, and just another word on Trevor Chalabar. He's, you know, you've got Jorginho, Kante and Kovacic, obviously your three main midfielders. Yeah. Have you seen enough from Trevor Chalabar yet to maybe think that he might play midfield? Of course, he excelled there. Um, in the loans that he, he went on? Yeah, we know this. Uh, for us, so far, he only played in the back three. So 
right now I would say this is this is the positions these are the three positions where he can maybe achieve the most on the high level high level football but it's only my opinion after after six seven weeks and there's uh, enough room and enough space and enough time to to convince me uh, that he is maybe even a solution for us as a fourth midfielder uh, at one time we will maybe try it at one time um, there is some stuff to improve on this kind of level when the when the game is so tight when the game is so when you need to open spaces so quickly it's a big difference to play in midfield for, uh, for in in premier league or or with all the respect or in a in a in a in a in a smaller team in in france where you maybe can can rely on ball wins and transition game we have also many phases where we have uh, a lot of ball possession and need to find creative solutions. So hopefully we don't need to try it because uh, that would mean that our three uh, top guys are in, in, in shape and, and healthy. But uh, we have this in mind. We just talked on the, on the pitch about it uh, within the staff because he was doing a good, a good uh, ball possession exercise in the middle of the pitch. And I, j I just asked the same question to all of us. Could he even be maybe the, the number four solution? We need to find it out and, and give some time in it. I think now is not the time to confuse him and, and to try too many roles. He settled in. He settled in in the back three. He knows now. He learns now what it takes uh, to play on this position in terms of, of football tactics and behavior, principles of the game. Now he needs to learn what it takes to be a professional for Chelsea. He has big role models at his side, big experience and, and top players. So step by step, and maybe sometimes we will put him in midfield when, when all the other processes are done. Okay, we have time for a couple more in this section. We're going to do George Hammond's BBC and then end with Nick Joel. Thank you, Thomas. Hello. Um, I just wondered, I'm sure you're aware about this COVID outbreak at Arsenal and how much of a different team are they going to be this week? compared to the team that they've played against Brentford. Yeah, I, 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 I actually don't know what the team will be. It's a bit like it's it's a difficult one to predict. Um, for me, the situation when I put myself into their shoes is the situation is a bit like they can play maybe the underdog role here uh, because of the complications they had now with the COVID situation. The, um, the difficulties they had in the first match and, and to lose a first match. I, I think they will try to put themselves in, into the underdog role and fight, fight from there in this, in this London derby, which is uh, fair enough. And this is on us to be absolutely focused and, and well aware of, of, of uh, everything that they will ask us because there is a lot of quality in the squad. They have quality signings. They have quality players in their squad and they can hurt anybody if you're not concentrated, if you're not aware of the danger. So it, in the end, it comes down to us. What do we demand of us? And uh, there we will be very, very clear. And hopefully we can reach our top level to be, to be able to, to produce a, a top result. Um, now, please don't sit on the fence with this question, but UEFA announced their men's player of the year. It's N'Golo Kante, Jorginho and Kevin De Bruyne. So if you had a vote, who would, who would you be voting for? I would give uh, two votes for, for, for my two players, of course. <laughs> I, I cannot. And, <laughs> this, is, this is clear. And the men's coach of the year, you're up for that. So you're up against <laughs> Pep Guardiola mm -hmm. and Mancini. So who would you be voting for in that one? <laughs> Uh, I would not vote. Let the others vote. I mean, we know about it and I heard about it, but it's not the most important in uh, before a match, not before a match, not in between matches. It's in general not the most important, the individual awards. The most important is that we produce performances as a team that includes me, the manager and, and everybody in the staff. And that includes, of course, every player. It's, it's a team sport and that's why we love it and it will always stay like this. Hi Tom, just hope you're out there, take some time to wait. Um, just with the team, um, obviously great news that it's not a serious injury, it's had in situation for hasn't he? I mean, I know it's not a completely normal pre-season for him, but it must have been better than last year. And I mean, do you think that, you know, we can see the best, and you can see the best of him uh, this season, hopefully, you know, maybe with a partnership with uh, Lukaku, that could be quite uh, tasty, couldn't it? Cause, you know, oh, of course. Of any, 
Actually, any any partnership could can be could be very promising when Hakim plays on on a high level of his in, on his high level. I think he was very promising in the preseason. He had some very good matches last season, uh, also some difficulties and and uh, hard decisions for me to take. But the preseason was very promising and pretty impressive from him. The attitude he arrived here was absolutely the right attitude to to grow and and um, to show personality. This is what he did. Did fantastic from day one. He was decisive in every single friendly game we played, and he he, he was decisive in, the, in the, actually in the first competitive game in the final against Villarreal. Um, very very unfortunately he got injured so now we take need to take care of it uh, because once ha on one side we are very happy that he's back on the pitch the other side is that a shoulder injury can be a bit tricky so tomorrow is a decisive game for him and then we will see how far it can go and how much sense it makes and hopefully he did not uh, what the good thing is um, with a shoulder injury you can still run you can still do keep your fitness so you don't lose too much of that and he has a lot many training session in his legs and from there on once he gives the green light um, and feels totally free hopefully he can find his uh, his performance uh, from 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 this season very very quickly because he was very important for us okay thank you we'll end the, the broadcast section there um, we now move on to the